everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Wednesday, May 27th, right, Courtney? It is Wednesday. It feels like a Tuesday, but we're so glad to have you with us live here on Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore in Studio B. Courtney Zavala at home. How's everything going? You know, we are, we're moving straight ahead on this Wednesday, and it's, it's, it's a really amazing day. Before we get to all the amazing stuff going on here today, we've got to talk about Wine Club Wednesday. It's our first annual Wine Club Wednesday. Hopefully we can keep doing this. I don't know if the first annual, weekly. <laughs> first weekly Wine Club Wednesday. Okay. I don't know. We're going to come up with a better way of saying this. We're all about triple alliteration here. But we have a virtual wine tasting coming up with our friend and sommelier, Sean Beck. Of course, he's the beverage director with H-Town Restaurant Group. And he's been on the show many times. But he is going to take us to France and Spain for a virtual tasting. And get this, y'all, the wines are very affordable. The most expensive one is just $14. And Derek, I know this is speaking your love language. Yeah, it's speaking our language indeed, right? You can actually call Backstreet and say, I want the Houston mm. Life wines, and they'll pack them up. Three bottles, 42 bucks. So we'll get to that in just a bit. But as you mentioned, Courtney, today's a really huge day. If you've been watching the coverage on Channel 2, you know that we're about to see a launch. We hope if the weather cooperates, just about an hour and a half from now, yeah, an hour and 30 minutes, oh, two hours, there you go. Uh, uh, and Roseanne Aragon is hanging out down in Florida. But so many people, you know, Courtney, we've had astronauts on the show before. And so many folks growing up just had dreams of becoming an astronaut. And it's hard to believe the space shuttle program, you know, is in development starting in the 70s. But that first launch was April 12th, 1981. So I was 11 days old when this first happened. And we think of the space shuttle, many of us, we think about like the iconic, you know, the Challenger Discovery Columbia. Columbia, that, that, that design uh, that so many of us grew up with. Clearly today, that is a little bit different. And of course, that, that program ended in 2011. So today's a big deal that we will see NASA astronauts once again going into space. This time, their spacesuits look a little different, or at least their launch suits. And the spacecraft is totally different as well. You know, this whole story is really fascinating. And I think reading and listening to how Elon Musk got to where he is today, of course, with SpaceX and everything that he did to um, go with this vision to bring people back into space, bring the space program back to fruition. And I think what better way, the only thing I think that we're worried about today at this point is if weather can hold and we're hoping so. Um, it, it's a very specific launch time 3.33 local time there in Florida because um, the it has to um, link up with the International Space Station. And that is the time. There is no pushing it back. There's no moving it up. That is the time that needs to launch. And I think that the story here is being able to um, bring people back into space, relaunch this program, and just what this means for the future of space exploration, travel and just the science behind it, Derek. It's really fascinating. It is, and I cannot believe that once again, this is a live picture we're seeing of the launch pad there. And it gives me chills to think that we have astronauts that are just waiting to go up and link up with the International Space Station. Who better, by the way, to be covering this for Channel 2, but our very own Roseanne Aragon. Later, we will also chat with former astronaut Clayton Astro Clay Anderson. But in the meantime, there's Roseanne right there hanging out down in Florida and Roseanne this is such a great beat for you to cover I know you're such a fan of space describe to us the mood down there <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, we're at the beach. How could you be in a bad mood? And it is great weather now compared to what we had dealt with earlier this morning. But everyone here, you could see they are lining the beaches, this historic spot to watch the launch, which you'll see over my left shoulder here. That's how close we are. Um, but you, everyone here is just excited to be participating in American history. Many people here have traveled from all over the country to watch this moment, the SpaceX Demo 2 launch. You'll have command 
commanders Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley, NASA astronauts, heading up into space into the Crew Dragon capsule, which SpaceX made in the SpaceX suits. And they are expected to test this out. Uh, human beings in this capsule for the very first time. They did a, a, a dress rehearsal before without humans inside, and that went really well. So we are excited to see how this goes today. And I will be here all day reporting all of the different major steps in making that happen. And Ro, if you can, walk us through sort of the timeline, um, what the astronauts basically have been doing today. Because, I mean, they don't just like roll up and get in the shuttle and then it's like, you know, they're taking off. I mean, there's a, there is a long, lengthy process. You even talked about what they ate today. So walk us through everything that they've yeah. been through. Yeah, exactly. Well, for, to answer the question, they ate steak and eggs. That's a pretty hearty meal. I mean, if you're going into space, I guess you need some calories and you need some protein. Um, but basically, you know, that all of this has been carefully coordinated. They wake up in the morning, they get their medical checks, um, they have their suit checks, which you saw earlier if you're watching Channel 2 to make sure there's no leaks. Um, then they make their way uh, to say their goodbyes to their family, and there was such a precious moment where their children say goodbye through the glass of the car, which by but, you know, it's a Tesla Model X that they're going to take to the historic launch pad 39A. What you just see, has seen, if you're watching NASA TV, you know, they get up into um, the uh, where the Crew Dragon is, and they started a new tradition. It's called the White Room. That's the last spot they'll be standing on Earth before they leave. And they started a new tradition to sign the White Room before heading into the Crew Dragon. They're all suited up. Their suits plug into the capsule, uh, gives them the air they need to breathe, and also the, um, uh, to keep them cool and also um, allows them to talk with their team on the ground and soon again at uh, 333 Houston time they will be launching into space Wow we are here for this moment in American history it's all part of the NASA commercial crew program it really is incredible row and before we let you go because I know the next few hours you will be very very busy with your coverage uh, let's just talk a little bit about the forecast because we've heard people saying there's a 50 50 chance it's not just about the clear path for the launch but also once that rocket disconnects it needs to have clear weather over where it is targeted to land there in the ocean Yes, that's right. So all of these times are carefully selected because of everything like weather. Um, they will have weather balloons that they'll put up to get a feel for it. Um, but right now, NASA officials are saying it's a 50-50 go. But for right now, weather is cooperating. The vehicles are ready, and they will be watching very closely. But yes, you are right, Derek. They take into consideration everything from leaving and also coming back. All conditions need to make sure that it's optimal for these uh, astronauts to come back safely which all of these people here watching want so badly. Absolutely, absolutely. We are we are keeping our fingers crossed that the stars align for a very safe launch on schedule. Roseanne Aragon, thank you so much for your coverage. We'll be tuning in at 3 p.m. right here on Channel 2. Uh, have a great time out there. What a historic day. Thanks, Derek. And Courtney, you know, again, we mentioned that we've had astronauts on the show. We've had so many people. This is a childhood dream for the people who are actually able to become astronauts and go into space. It's a very select few. And uh, Courtney, mm -hmm. did you ever dream of becoming an astronaut? You know, I mean, who doesn't, right? I mean, to be able to wear the suit or to, you know, walk on the moon or see planets and all of these things. So, yeah, everybody, you know, in my, I know my oldest brother, who literally is a rocket scientist, um, I had visions of doing that as well. And it's a very elite group. And I know one of our coworkers, I think, also had aspirations for that. Um, we want our viewers to also share their memories of where, of course, the Space City. So Olivia, one of our producers, um, went to space camp here in, um, look at that, in Alabama. Where is she? Do we have a little, um, yeah, she's, do we know where she is in that photo? We've got her circled right there on oh, the screen. Stop it. She looks exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. But you know, Space Camp, 
As you mentioned, here in Space City, we are so lucky in Houston that we essentially have a front row seat for these world-class training facilities where astronauts spend so much time preparing for the trip of a lifetime, the journey of a lifetime. And whether it was space camp or just a visit to the Johnson Space Center, we want to hear from you as we always do our viewers. Please share with us your favorite space memories. Share them on our Facebook page and we will share them a little later on in the show. And Courtney, speaking of astronauts, uh, we've got another special guest. Oh, absolutely. And you know what, Derek, you and I suited up. We, we did we go to the moon? I thought we did that recently. Anyway, we maybe did. I'm forgetting something. Yeah. Well, it's hard to imagine <laughs> what really the astronauts are feeling right now ahead of the launch, you know, as they are waiting and anticipating for that 3.33 clock, right? Yeah, yeah, that mental preparation, the physical preparation, the toll it takes on their bodies. So, of course, that's why invi we invited back to the show retired astronaut Clayton Astro Clay Anderson, who has spent 167 days in space. He's joining us now by Zoom, and Clayton, it's great to see you, bud. And you did all of this time in space, correct me if I'm wrong, but you did six spacewalks, right? So you have many hours logged doing your spacewalks. So six spacewalks, about 38 hours and 28 minutes total time outside, so significant. <laughs> I'd say so. Um, if you can, I mean, put it into words for our viewers what that feels like, what that experience is like to be in a spacewalk and part of that. Well, it's, uh, it's very mentally taxing, a spacewalk. It's very physically taxing, but it's not nearly as physically taxing as it was when we trained in the swimming pool in Houston uh, because of the water resistance and the fact that you still have gravity. So when you get up into space, uh, with zero gravity, yeah. you realize it's a pretty awesome experience, but it's very mentally taxing because at that point you are there and if you screw something up, it's really hard to recover from that. Yeah, I can imagine. And obviously today is a big day because this is the first time, Clayton, in nearly 10 years that we have had NASA astronauts lifting off from American soil, going to space uh, in partnership with a private company. Talk about the launch process, because as a kid, I, I had such a hard time wrapping my mind around this idea that when all systems are a go, there are humans on this spacecraft. What does that feel like on your body? Well, it's an incredible experience. The first seat, it's different today though, because SpaceX is gonna use all liquid fuel. So it's a much smoother uh, ride to orbit than the shuttle days when you had those two solid rocket motors on the side that caused it to be really bumpy and loud and rumbly uh, for the first couple minutes. Uh, but these guys are gonna accelerate smoothly and quickly uh, into orbit. Uh, I love the fact that it's new, it's modern, it's sleek. Their uniforms, their suits are different and sleek. Uh, and they're the inside of the cockpit. It's like uh, when I went on the shuttle, it was like crawling into my grandpa's 72 Ford pickup truck. And now they're climbing into a <laughs> Tesla cockpit, you know. So um, I'm really envious. I'm really jealous of these guys. They're going to spend one to four months in space on the space station, my home and they didn't have to go learn Russian. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> I love the analogy here. This is fantastic. But, you know, to bring it back down to earth a little bit, Clay, um, it's gonna take them about 19 hours, right? That, that's the travel time um, to get to the space station. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, in the old days, in the old days, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> We took a couple days to get to the space station to rendezvous and dock. We launched the rocket, we converted the rocket into a laboratory and a spaceship. And then we took the next day uh, to rendezvous and dock because we didn't want people to be sick and puking and all that sort of thing. But with these guys, it's pretty much all automatic. Um, so they can dock, rendezvous and dock within that 19 hour window. I, I'm guessing that later in, in their history time, they'll be able to do it even quicker. Uh, but see, Doug and Bob, the two astronauts, have a tremendous amount of work to do once they get to orbit and monitoring all the systems and making sure the life support and the thrusters and the guidance and nav and all that stuff is working right because after all, this is still a demonstration flight. So 
that's part of why they're taking 19 hours. They have a lot of troubleshooting to do and a lot of checks to do uh, as they make their way toward the International Space Station. It really is incredible what a technical job uh, this is as well. Clayton Anderson, I'm so sorry we are out of time. I do want to point out to our viewers, though, your new children's book, Letters from Space, is coming this fall. That follows the ordinary spaceman and A is for astronaut. So check out uh, Clayton's books anywhere books are sold. It is so great to see you. We cannot wait to have you back in studio very soon. All right, maybe in the fall. Okay. Thanks, Clayton. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Absolutely. We would love that. <laughs> we do have a link to connect with Clayton thanks. on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Clayton, thanks again. And our live team coverage of this historic launch will continue on air and online beginning at 3 p.m. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. Over the past couple months, people have been finding all kinds of ways to stay connected from bingo to workout classes, even, Courtney, virtual wine tastings. Sign me up because it all sounds fabulous. <laughs> Sommelier Sean Beck has handpicked three fantastic wines to get this. The most expensive bottle is just $14. Our virtual wine tasting is right now. <music> Well, welcome to the wine tasting of Houston Live. Derek, we love a good wine. Actually, we love any wine. We're not too picky, are we? Uh, we're, we're picky when it comes to the right things, right? But someone who has taught us this, Courtney, is Sean Beck. And Sean, I know that you have traveled the world. You have spent so much time training. And sort of explain to us what it is you do, because you're a sommelier, right? And this is an official title that comes to a very select group of people. So I, you know, I technically train for that. Uh, I've been working as a sommelier for 20 years, which means I'm supposedly a wine expert. And so I marry like this knowledge of history and geography and taste and kind of marry it to what we're doing in our various restaurants, be it at Backstreet, Hugo's, or Caracol Sochi, to kind of curate a wine experience for you when you come to the restaurant. We are leaning on you today to walk us through this. And what I think is so great about the wines, the three wines that you selected, not only are we taking a trip to Spain and France today, but all of these wines are $14 and under. Yes. <laughs> Which one are we starting with, Sean? Because I'm ready Let's to Let's start ready. with the rosé. And so oh. this is the rosé I picked out for you all today. This is a French rosé uh, called uh, Chateau uh, de Jacques. It's out of the Loire Valley of France. So that's our first travel destination. And so this is a, kind of a little winery that's uh, started in the town of Anjou. And they use one of the main red grapes of the region, Cabernet Franc. Uh, most Americans know Cabernet Sauvignon, but we don't know Cabernet Franc. Think of Cabernet Franc as Cabernet Sauvignon's prettier, older mom. Because <laughs> Cabernet Franc was crossed with Sauvignon Blanc to create Cabernet Franc, Sauvignon. And so it's the mom in this equation, and it's very aromatic, it's spicy, and it's got all this kind of tart, playful red fruit. And so to me, this is like one of those wines that I would, I love to drink because it's absolutely poundable and there's very little regret with it. And if you're just sitting around the pool having some guacamole and chips, this is amazing with it. It's even better than a margarita, uh, but it's great with like a little low-key salad for dinner, if you want to make the table look a little bit fancier. And in Derek's uh, words, this is the cool mom, not a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. No, cool mom. This one's like a $14 bottle retail, and I would serve this to just about anyone, especially on a warm day, and they'll be like, oh, that, that hits the spot. Okay. So our wife today, is Protocola Bianco or Blanco from uh, the La Mancha area of Spain. So you're in central Spain now. Beautiful. And this wine's only job is to make you feel cool and refreshed while you drink it. Fabulous. It has a very specific job, which is why it loves Texas from like May through like September. I was just looking down on my notes here. This is $10? Exactly. It's so cool. It's real estate, right? If you try and buy an ex inexpensive wine from Napa, the value of the land's too expensive. But here we're in central Spain where they've been doing grapes for centuries, largely bulk grapes, and so the value's fantastic. The only difference is where they used to make these kind of garbagey bulk wines here, 
this is a fourth generation family that kind of has a little bit of pride and they're like we'll still make inexpensive wines but we're gonna make good and expensive wines you know what i love about this this is fresh it's crisp it's clean, and, and typically a white wine I don't usually like um, because they're maybe a little bit more sweeter for me, but this is almost a perfect balance across everything. I love it. Okay, so third wine here, and our third wine, y'all, is 11 bucks. So let's get to the third wine, and now we're gonna talk about a red. Yes, this is my sexy barbecue wine. It is be my one of the most handle. <laughs> Your sexy barbecue wine? That's always the moniker I use for this. This is a Spanish red, but we're down in the south of Spain now, so we're on the coast. It's an area known as Yecla, and the producer is Castilla de Barón, and it's a grape called Monastrell. And the reason I call it like a sexy barbecue wine is just because everything about it is fun and flirty and playful, and it doesn't like... It doesn't feel too stiff to bring to a cookout or to a barbecue. And I still can't believe this went just $11. Sean, I think it's so great that the options you have brought us today not only give us a little trip around the world, but are easy on the budget. We are allowed right now to do takeout wine and sell wine from the restaurants. And so we've been doing that at Back Street Cafe for the past seven weeks. So we put kits together. So I did this kit for the show. So you get this three pack of wines for $42. It's fantastic. Okay, this was this is news to me. This is that was a total surprise. I had no idea. So so if people want to order them, how do they do it, Sean? So if they call it back, she just ask for the Houston Life Kit. Oh, perfect. So well, cheers to you, Sean. Thanks for walking us through this today. Thanks so much. Um, My pleasure. I always love hanging out with you guys. You drink well. <laughs> you too. Thank you for being here. We love you. Oh, wow. <laughs> we drink well and play well with others, don't we? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. So it's our new... Right? It's our new favorite thing. I love how happy you are. And like, you were like hugging one of the bottles. It just made me really happy. But this is like our new favorite thing on Wine Club Wednesdays. And we make it super easy for everyone. Did you, you loved all the wines, didn't you, Derek? I love them all. And next week, we're doing wines from Texas. I know, it's gonna be great. So by the way, don't forget, you don't have to drive around to all of the places to find these wines. You can if you want, but just let Backstreet know. Uh, Backstreet Cafe, the three pack, the Houston Life pack is available for $42. Very nice. And uh, switching gears, we're gonna be back with a look at some of your favorite space memories. If you haven't already, share yours on our Facebook page. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's our favorite time of the show when I get to talk about the artists who made my HL sign here at my home studio. And today goes out to Ella, who is soon to be a seventh grader. And I love this. She's a great artist. She hand draws and sketches all kinds of things. I love sort of the, the color scheme here as well. It's beautiful, and I love the font uh, that she created. It reminds me a little bit of Tim Burton, right? Like, there's a little bit of mystery yeah. behind it. Very nice, Ella. And we've been asking you, our viewers, some of your favorite space memories, and the comments keep coming in. There's Stephanie's post right there. It's kind of tough to see her face there, but that was from the Falcon Heavy second launch, June 25th. Thank you, Stephanie, for sending that in. And look at Lauren Kelly posted something for us. Last summer, we got to see the big moon exhibit at the HMNS. Gabe and I got to be astronauts. Gabe's the little astronaut. Lauren's the big one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. And Danny Allen wrote in saying, uh, sending this pic along with his dad at Houston Space Center. And, you know, it really is true. We are so lucky that just a short drive down the road, we can go and visit NASA in our own backyards. People travel from all over the world to uh, to visit there. And I remember when our show was back in the mall, Courtney, there was a young teenage girl who yep. cried when she met Clayton Anderson because he's such an inspiration to her. All right, folks, coming up next, once the dust settles on coronavirus, what will that mean for your travel plans? Our travel expert is sharing five trends to help us plan our next getaway. Next. 
Well, welcome back. You know, from disrupted business trips to canceled vacation plans, COVID-19 hit the worldwide travel industry really hard. And experts are saying one thing is certain, traveling will look very different after the coronavirus pandemic is under control. Travel expert Gabe Saglier, our friend, is sharing five travel trends after coronavirus you might need to know about before making those plans. Gabe, it's great to see you there from home. And even though nobody's traveling. Is this the wrong segment? Oh. Is this the wrong segment? <laughs> oh, my God. I thought we were just <laughs> am, I, am I late for this one? You I'm are, sorry. That I, was the last okay. segment. We've moved on to okay, water sorry. now, dude. Yeah, 10, okay. Okay. So I love that you have this map <laughs> behind you right now. We can't really travel anywhere right now. At least you can look at the map and imagine. And I understand that according to data, a lot of Americans already have that place picked out. They are just raring to go. They know where they're going to go once this is all over. Yeah, I think the reality is that plans may change, uh, and, the, and the travel industry is okay with that. So you're seeing some unprecedented flexibility moving forward. So if you do change your plans and need to cancel that flight, you will at least get a credit on that flight, uh, hotels, uh, cruise lines. There's a lot of flexibility. But yeah, most people have established where they want to go. Most of it looks like it's going to be a drive. Most people are using their personal car for their next uh, trip. Um, so anywhere one, two, three miles away from Houston is probably where most folks are looking to go it's it's a little safer it's a little easier to control uh it's more affordable so that's the first trip we're going to do i think uh, it looks like it's going to be that road trip uh, it's going to be a pretty big boon i think for road tripping over the next several weeks hmm. And I also think, Gabe, that many people, if they are able to travel at some point and they're saying, OK, I've got the money to do so, it's they're also looking for cheap and easy. Right. So obviously the road trip kind of fills that a little bit. But if yeah. you're going to you want a deal. Yeah, that's it. So the flexibility is going to be key. Uh, so, again, booking is going to be easy changing that booking is going to be easy. Uh, and I think we're going to see uh, pricing at levels that we've not seen in many, many years. Clearly, uh, value is a big incentive uh, for travelers. So if you can get to that point where concern about safety, perhaps, is right in line with a price point that we can't resist, that's going to get uh, certainly people uh, traveling all over again. I think next year prices will go up. And you know, these airlines, a lot of these travel companies are going to have to make up the losses that we're seeing here in the first half of 2020. But for the, for the initial get-go here, uh, once we're over over the, you know, once these mandates begin to loosen up from state to state, uh, I think you're going to be seeing some phenomenal pricing already. Some airfare sales for the latter half of 2020, uh, cruise sales for the first quarter of 2021, already very robust. And Gabe, I know for many folks in the country, the last few months, and frankly around the world, uh, we, we've all sort of been in a holding pattern, right? Canceling or postponing those trips. Do you expect June will be a little different? I think June is going to make a lot of us feel safer about planning that trip. I think a lot of us are on hold now, uh, but I think what happens is in June, we're starting to see the reopening of a lot of, uh, you know, recognizable destinations, uh, landmarks. Um, you know, uh, the first week in June, many European uh, destinations like Italy, Portugal uh, are starting to open themselves up. A lot of that initially to other EU travelers but uh, the fact that we're seeing the Italy's and the and the and the Portugal's and the Spain's beginning to open back up without these sort of mandatory quarantines that's a good sign here in the States you know Vegas opens up next week uh, today uh, Disney World announced a July 11th opening there in Orlando um, so I think June all of a sudden re presents the, the, the a move forward and I think it's gonna help a lot of us start to really think about making plans to visit some destinations that we've been dreaming about for the last couple of months yeah, and whether that's domestic or, you know, international, I think the domestic one will trump that, uh, obviously. But let's talk, you mentioned this just a little bit ago about cruises relaunching. This yeah. was the year that, unfortunately, my family and I uh, decided to take a cruise for spring break. Clearly, that didn't happen. But, you know, for the avid cruiser, when, when are we going to see this kind of open up again, that we're going to be okay to cruise? Well, I think the avid cruiser, now about uh, 16, 17% of the U.S. population would consider themselves avid cruisers, taking multiple cruises within a year. Uh, and any one of those folks, uh, plans that they may have had between, say, February and about July, August, have had to completely put those plans on hold. So these avid cruisers, these hardcore cruisers, they're just going to push their vacation plans down. So we are seeing a pickup in uh, cruising uh, bookings for the latter half of 2020, in particular, the first several months of 2021. Uh, so those are going to be the folks that will help uh, sort of buoy the, the industry. Now, 
it's 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 still dealing with it with an image issue i think that uh the big goal for 2020 from the industry before covid was to kind of really attract the new to cruise those of us who maybe don't cruise at all or have done money one or two in the past uh that is, that's going to have to wait a, a little while so i think the dependence is going to be on those really hardcore cruisers who just are ready to cruise they're ready to welcome those new safety protocols um but they, they're going to they're going to set sail and i think we'll start to see some really aggressive promotions from the cruise lines, uh, price, price points that are going to be eye-popping uh, as a way to try to really get people who might be on the fence to, to jump on board. The general idea, though, out there is that they, the cruise industry will be probably the slower one when you compare, you look at the, the airline industry, we can look at the rental car industry, hotel industry. I think the cruises mm -hmm. um, are going to just take a little while longer. It's, it's going to be a long sail for them, and I think they're getting ready for that. All right, so more deals on cruises, more road trips, more domestic travel. Gabe, we're just about out of time, but I understand you just launched a brand new YouTube show, and this is so great this. because you know all things travel. You always know how to find the best deals and the best times to travel. Well, that's very nice of you to mention. Yes, it's uh, the Gabe Saglier Show. This is a quarantine show. I'm like, what am I doing with my kids while we're hunkered uh, at home? My 12-year-old is the editor. My 14-year-old does research. Uh, my 5-year-old does set design. So a very homegrown, low-frills show. But I'm speaking with folks who are really are really tapped into what's happening later on uh, in the next couple of months uh, in the entertainment industry, travel to places like Sonoma, Ireland. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm getting big-name folks on, uh, but keeping a super approachable and accessible just to keep the conversation about travel and the reopening of travel uh, and culinary destinations uh, accessible. Gabe, we miss seeing you in studio, but cheers to you, my friend, and your family. I hope you guys are staying safe. Cl clearly, you're well hydrated, so we don't have to worry about that, but hopefully we'll see you soon. You bet. Can't <laughs> to wait. Visit Thanks, guys. With, uh, yeah, us too. And visit our website to be connected with Gabe and more on that YouTube channel. Gabe, thank you. We'll see you soon, bud. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Still ahead on Houston Life, Lauren Kelly is taking a pie in the face. Uh-oh, for a good cause. How you can support Camp for All's Fun Challenge after this. Well, welcome back. You know, through the years, thousands of campers, volunteers, doctors, nurses, and staff have been pied in the face for Camp for All. It's a great example of the joy and fun campers experience at their barrier-free campsite. It's such an incredible place, but right now campers are not getting that opportunity because of the coronavirus. So today, Camp for All is asking for support through donations and, of course, a pie in the face. Lauren Kelly has more. Lots of challenges going around online, but this one might just be one of my favorites so far. Camp for All, the president and CEO, Pat Sorrells, is joining us today. And this is a passion project that you've been with for many years, Pat. Why don't you tell everybody exactly what Camp for All is? Camp for All is a place for children and adults with challenging illnesses and special needs to come to discover life. It is barrier free, meaning it's barrier free in activities. There are multiple ways to every activity so everybody can do them. The site is barrier free. We have eight foot concrete sidewalks so two people in wheelchairs can roll side by sides. In our campers, we serve about 11,000 campers except for this year, throughout the year. <laughs> and they come from uh, multiple challenges with from 65 different nonprofits like Texas Children's, two women that got together and started a camp for ch children with autism, muscular dystrophy, you name the organization, Epilepsy Foundation, they come out to camp for all. And we share the cost, so most of our campers come free. And it really means a lot to them because our partners can bring more campers with our business model. That's such a wonderful, wonderful thing to hear. And it really is a camp for all. What are some of the activities that if you travel to Camp for All, which is located in Burton, Texas, what are some of the activities that campers get to do? Well, think about camp, first of all. Camp is wonderful whether you have challenges or not because it's such a growth in self-confidence. So you come to Camp for All with epilepsy or whatever, maybe a missing limb, you can do every activity, which means challenge courses, zip lines, riding horses, arts and crafts. You can create your own music and record your own music. You can do all of our activities, swimming, canoeing, just like a regular camp, except that we have multiple ways to do everything. 
That's so wonderful. Oh, I can't wait to go out and visit one time. <laughs> I so want you to come. Right now is the Camp for All High in the Face Challenge. And this is so much fun to watch. I mean, who doesn't like to watch somebody get pied in the face, especially when it's to raise funds and awareness for the campers at Camp for All. Why don't you tell us how the pie in the face challenge works? Oh. Well, first of all, it is so much fun and we all need to laugh now. And I think that's the best part is everybody goes into hysterics, including me, after it's done. <laughs> this is hurting, Gina. <laughs> so uh, our wonderful Matt Mogus and his dad, Louis Mogus, who are just wonderful people that can't for all their wonderful people, period. Uh, their company, Mogus Industries, has a pie challenge. And so they decided to benefit Camp for All. And what happens is you get challenged or you don't necessarily need to be challenged if you want to do it on your own. And you make a donation, have a pie thrown in your face, enjoy it. <laughs> and then you challenge other people to do the same. And it's been so much fun. So let's talk about the money and the funds that it's raising. They're going to be doing some uh, matching for all the amounts that are being raised here. Yes, Camp for All right now is unfortunately and very sadly closed. So we're, with the COVID-19, we had to close down camp throughout the summer, hoping we can open in the fall. So our shortfall now is uh, near 1.5 million, and we are trying to make up for that. The Sweet Mogus family and their Mogus Industries company are matching up to $50,000 for the pie challenge. So we're really hoping to get to $50,000 and that would mean $100,000 for Camp for All to get us through this difficult situation and bring our campers back to camp. That's the most Absolutely. important thing. Oh, yeah, I got a boyfriend here who's really dying to pie me <laughs> in the face, so that's gonna happen. Pat Charles is the president and CEO of Camp for All, and we're so excited for you to join us, and we're just so excited to raise these money and, and these funds for Camp for All because it's such a wonderful experience for those campers who might not necessarily have had so much joy in camp before. Or, or ever so whatever we can do to help use Thank that you. hashtag camp for all pie challenge and i'm gonna take this challenge right now and i'll save you some of that pie pie pat <laughs> i'm excited i can't wait to see it <laughs> i have decided to take a pie pies to the face for this wonderful organization for camp for all hashtag camp for all pie challenge charlie my nephew is coming up first <gasps> oh my god! Okay, Madeline. Okay, um, Madeline. okay, Madeline, my niece is next. Go on, big girl. Oh, <laughs> that was the gentlest pie in the face ever. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> oh wow. Looks like a very fun challenge and of course for a really great cause. Lauren Kelly, thank you for that. She wasn't having any fun, huh? <laughs> After the break, if you have a grad at home, we're gonna show you graduation party must-haves for an unforgettable occasion. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. You know, the class of 2020 has really worked so hard. And while graduations are looking a little different this year, you can still celebrate their accomplishments at home and making it happen. It's easier than you think. Yeah, Clara Campbell, corporate affairs manager with Kroger, is joining us now to show us all the products we need to honor our grad. Clara, it's great to see you there from one of your stores. And let's talk about uh, how you guys are calling yourselves essentially the one-stop shop. So whether it's a party platter of sandwiches or sushi or cookies or veggies you guys take all of the headaches out of this process walk us through what you got absolutely so first of all before I start I just want to say a big congratulations to all of the graduates out there, out there. I know that this year is gonna be very very different but like you said this Kroger really is a one-stop shop so let me show you some of the things that we've got here so did you know that we have 70 different varieties of party trays? So from meats and cheeses, even sushi, sandwiches. And if you're looking for something a little bit warmer, we have fried chicken. So whether you have eight people or 80 people, 
we can bake that right there for you nice and fresh um, and if you need more just let us know and, and we can do that very very easily wherever you need we're right here what I think is so great, Clara, too, is I love the bundling. I have done this before where I just say, look, I have 16 people. Or I have 60 people. Help me plan because I need snacks. I need dessert. And that's the way you guys create your bundles. Yes, of course. So the bundling offers that we have are phenomenal. So say you're looking for a party tray and you want some sandwiches, you want your dessert, you want your brownies, um, and maybe you just want some finger food, some cheeses, things like that. You can bundle those with set those and you'll get a discount and they start at just $80. So it's a really, really good, great deal if you're looking for a selection for your, your table. And Clara, can we just talk about the sheet cakes? Because I love I love a good sheet cake. I, I, was I just hearing clean up on aisle two? We love hearing the store announcements. <laughs> so seriously, the sheet cakes, uh, not only does everyone love a sheet cake, but you guys have this awesome promotion where if you buy like a quarter or a half sheet cake, you can get one of those awesome custom giant like cookies, yep. right? Yes, yeah, so right here we have one of our graduation sheet cakes. I'm just gonna show this to you here. If you buy a quarter sheet, a half sheet, or a full sheet like this one right here, you're gonna get a colossal cookie for just $2, which is a really fantastic mm -hmm. deal. So you can get the cake here for your party, then your graduate, you, you have a gift for them as a cookie as well. Right, because they worked hard. They don't need to share that cookie. I'm just saying. I have I have gotten so many of my kids' birthday party cakes um, from Kroger, and people are astonished. They can't believe that it came from Kroger because the decorations, the taste, everything is phenomenal. And what I love about this, a lot of people, we don't. We could do curbside pickup. We could do all these things, but we don't want to go to store to store. So Kroger is really one-stop shopping, not only for the food, but you can get everything, too, from the cards and the decorations. Yes, absolutely. So if you're looking for a gift, what what's better than a gift card? I know they're very popular in my family, the graduates. This is what I buy everybody. We have some some really, really great gift cards that we do our two time fuel points um, as well. So you're getting those extra points for refuel. And we have some really great offers too on our gift cards. So one in particular that I think is great for grads, Barnes and Nobles. So save ten percent off Barnes and Noble gift cards when you buy two cards fulfilling fifty dollars or more. So those graduates who are going off to college, they need to buy some books. That's a perfect gift card for them. You know, that's a great idea. The gift cards, the greeting cards. Let's talk about the, the floral shop because one thing I love about going to Kroger is you guys literally have flowers from all around the world. And if someone wants to just buy them separately and put together their own arrangement, they can do that. But you guys also create arrangements that are ready to go. That's right. So every single one of our stores has a fully trained florist on board. So usually right at the entrance, you can come in, you can buy all different types of bouquets. You can buy your corsages and your bits and ears made to order. So tell us your color scheme and we will have those made fresh for you with fresh floral. And I don't know if you know this, but Kruger's actually the biggest uh, florist in the whole of the U.S. When you, you take in the number of our stores and all the floral that we do, we're actually the biggest floral in the U.S. Huh. It's a fun fact That is really incredible. Yeah, I love that fun fact. Let's also talk about free the same day pickup. You guys offer that free and is just as little as four hours, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so we know that things are a little bit different right now. It might be hard for some people. Maybe they don't feel comfortable coming into the store and picking up everything they need. So we're offering free curbside pickup for all customers. Just order online, burger.com. Put everything that you need into your cart online, and within four hours, you can come to the store. We'll have it ready for you. It's contactless. We'll we'll load it into your car for you. That's it. We want to make it as easy and as streamlined as possible. Yeah, that uh, that free pickup that is a game changer. If you have not tried it, guys, you got to check it out. Clara Campbell with Kroger. Thank you so much for your time and for this nice showcase. And uh, to our viewers, now that you know what to give your graduate, let's listen to Kroger Houston President Joe Kelly, who shared a special message to the class of 2020. You did it. You accomplished an incredible milestone in your life. Whether you're graduating from your final year in college or high school, this is a major step in the journey of your life. A proud moment for all of us here today. We don't yet know how the world we live in will change moving forward. But I can tell you one thing, every one of you will create change. Change for good and change that will push us all forward through any challenges we may face. This may not be the graduation you imagined, and I wish that I could give you that. It's something you worked for and something you deserve. 
but you are receiving something much more valuable. It's the knowledge that no matter what, you will succeed now and in the future. You will know with confidence that you have the commitment and dedication to rise above any situation and accomplish all of your dreams. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Oh, so heartwarming to hear from Joe Kelly, president of Kroger here in Houston. And Clara Campbell, thanks so much for joining us today and giving us that great tour of everything you offer under one roof. And for more information, you to visit your nearest Kroger store or visit their website at Kroger.com. I hear those store announcements again, Clara. Clean up on aisle two. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks for your time today. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up on tomorrow's show, guys, we are revisiting Cooking with Parents. We're wrapping up Asian Pacific Islander American Heritage Month with a special cooking demo from Peli Peli co-owner Thomas Wynn. He's going to be cooking with his mom for the first time in his life, y'all. She's going to teach him how to make their family recipe for spring rolls. Oh, I cannot wait. Very nice. Peli Peli is one of our favorites. Also, in honor of Military Appreciation Month, we're highlighting Blue Star Moms. They are a local group of moms with children in the military also letting you know how you can help their mission to send care packages to troops deployed in combat zones. Very nice. Looking forward to that. Absolutely. And I believe that we have some viewer comments coming up. Is that right? We sure do. All right, well, let's get to him. You want to start, Derek? Yeah, there is Scott as a space kid in 1970. He was an astronaut and no one could tell him otherwise. Love it, Scott. Absolutely. And I believe, uh, who's next? Charlie? This was September 2012 when the shuttle came to Ellington. Oh, I love that. That was yeah. fantastic. These flyers were great. Take a look at our Facebook page if you would like to see more comments from our viewers. Thanks to all of you who submitted those comments. And we'll leave you now with a live look from the launch pad. Stay tuned for our coverage at 3.